Welcome to another Wednesday edition of Virtually Tasting the Featured Bogginog and Beer of the Week. This is May 12th, 2021, and tonight we're going to taste Duck's Ass. It's an English-style barley wine. It's our 2020 vintage, which we're going to release this weekend, as well as some other vintages that we've uh, we, we uh, release a few bottles of past years each time we release the current one. This is 2020. I'm going to show you how to how I would recommend that you pour this beer. So open the bottle and pour it straight into the throat of the glass. You're going to want this to foam up well because you want all the esters to flow out. You want all the aromas to come up and you want to wake that beer up. This is our English style barley wine. We brew it once a year. And I'm going to give you the recipe, do some tasting notes on it, give you a little background on English barley wines, and then we'll turn around and we'll do some Q&A and um, answer any questions you may have. So first of all, this uh, duck's ass is 11.2% alcohol by volume, and it's got 91 international bitterness units, IBUs. We brew it in 5.16 gallon batches, which is a sixth barrel. And the reason is our mash ton can only handle 40 pounds of grains, and for us to be able to pull this off without adding any sugars, this is all 100% malted barley. And so that's how we do that. So we have to do three batches to fill our fermenter for a half barrel full batch. And it takes us about three months to completely ferment it out and condition it and get this carbonated in a keg. And then we let it sit before we bottle it. So the original gravity is 1.109 and the terminal gravity is 1.025. So there's still quite a bit of residual sugar left, which is important on a beer like this because you want some of that sweetness, that richness to still be apparent. Uh, the color is 21.7 for the SRM. It's got beautiful color. I would say it's a dark um, copper, bronze. Um, clarity is incredibly clear. I don't know if you can tell here, but uh, since we let this thing uh, cold condition, and slowly ferments and get extreme clarity on the beer. We use London water and we also use the Fuller's yeast, which is White Labs 002, WLP 002. We've got four malts in, in, the, uh, in the mash. We've got 22 pounds of Crisp's Maris Otter is our base malt, 88%. Crisp Crystal 120, which is our dark crystal malt, one pound or 4%. Crisp, Crisp 77 Crystal, and that's one pound, four percent. And then we also have Castles, Belgian Biscuit, one pound or four percent. That's mashed in 152 degrees. And we hold it there for one hour and then we sparge it with 170 degree water and collect all of our sugars in the boil kettle and boil it for one hour. Now, while we're filling that boil kettle up with one hour, we add dried fruits into the boil. We add a third pound each of dried dates, figs, apricots, cranberries and raisins. So that's a lot of dried fruits. So we take the dates and the figs and apricots and we cut those in half. So we can expose the, the inner part of the fruit and have all the seeds exposed. We're gonna extract all those flavors out that we can. Once the boil gets started, at 60 minutes left, we add two ounces of magnum malts, which gives us 88 IBUs. And then with 15 minutes left, we add a half ounce of the UK Goldings and we get another um, we get another three IBUs at 15 minutes left. The result is this delicious beer. So we let it ferment at, uh, we pitch it at 65 and we let it ferment up to 68. Now, since we're doing three batches, we give it two weeks to ferment out and then we um, will add another batch into it and we add half as about much more yeast to it each time. And then when we're all done, we let it take another six weeks to ferment. And so that's the, the duration because we want to completely be done and we do it at a lower temperature, lower temperature so we don't get those hot alcohol tones. We want this to be a very smooth, relaxed, refreshing 11.2% barley wine if that's possible. And then we um, transfer it to secondary and we cold crash it for two weeks, 14 days at 32 degrees because we want the extreme clarity we can. We want all the yeast and all the any grain particles to drop out. And we've done a great job. There is nothing. This is absolutely clear as could be. You would think that we actually filter this, but there's no filtering that happened on this. So let's take a, um, 
we got a bee that wants to come in and try this too. So we also then uh, keg it and we force carve into one and a half volumes, which is the English volume. And then we bottle it, and this is freshly bottled, and the smell is amazing. So um, I'm going to taste this and I'm going to give you some notes on uh, what the experts would say for a uh, English barley wine. It's got a very rich and strong malty, caramel-like aroma, a lot of fruitiness there. It smells like dried fruits, which it should be because we have an ample amount of dried fruits in there. I don't really get much of a uh, hoppy aroma out of that. I do get a little bit of a alcohol tone, but nothing harsh. Maybe a little uh, ready, toasty, and a little toffee molasses. And um, might even have a little sherry-like quality um, that I'm getting out of this. But uh, beautiful color. It's rich. It's got a lot of flavor, upfront sweetness to it. Big, um, ready character to it. Lots of dried fruit on the middle of the back of my tongue. A little heat as it's going down to the very back of my tongue. A nice dry finish to it with a long lingering. Uh, flavor. Um, I'm getting some toffee tones, caramel tones, um, maybe even a touch of molasses, but there's there's none of those characters in here, but I think it's just from the complexity. And as these age, more of those flavors are going to develop as the sugar starts to break down. Now this is being, I'm drinking this about 50 degrees, and you want to have this a little bit warmer because all those flavors are going to come out. You're going to mute all the things of, that are really interesting about this beer at a cold temperature. So make sure you let this warm up. You can tell there's 91 IBUs, not from um, a harsh bitterness, but from that dryness on the finish. It really dries your tongue out at the end, which is incredible that uh, you have a beer with that much residual sugar left, that much flavor, and it finishes that dry. So it's really makes you want to have a little bit more. It's got a full body. Um, I'd say it's got a chewy character to it, but uh, it's, it's delicious. Wow, that tastes really, really good. Um, carbonation being on the lighter side is not providing any harshness to the beer. It's letting the flavors um, generate their own impression and give you that character without having that artificial um, masking of flavors, what I think that high carbonation beers do. Well, let's see what they say. So, uh, English Barley Wines, this is the uh, BJCP guidelines on it. it. says, rich and strong malty, caramel-like aroma, strong fruitiness with dried fruit character, uh, mild to assertive hop aromas, um, alcohol aromatics, they may low to moderate, but never harsh. Intensity of aromatics often subsides with age. Should have a bready, toasty, toffee, molasses, treacle notes. And age versions are gonna have a sherry-like, maybe a, a port-like aromatic to it. And I'm getting some of those things, but um, when you open up a bottle that's three to five years old, older, you're going to get much more of that kind of character. Color should be rich gold to dark amber, even dark brown, and it should have a ruby highlights. It should be not opaque. It should um, it's a low to moderate white head. If I aggravate this just a little bit and, and get a little foamed, you can kind of see the color of that being off-white. Um, it should be close to brill brilliantly cl clear as it warms, and that is an extremely clear beer. I just don't know if you can tell on the on the video here. Um, should have great depth, and it should have the viscosity. So you can see when you go to the edge, you can see the legs on it, and that's the alcohol that's talking to you as it's reaching the edges there. Flavor should be strong, intense, complex, multi-layered flavors from bready, biscuity to nutty to deep toast, dark caramel, toffee, or e even more molasses. High multi sweetness on the palate, even though the finish may be moderately sweet to moderately dry. Some oxidative and vinous qualities may be present even as it's been aged. Alcohol flavor shouldn't be harsh. Moderate to high fruitiness, even with a dried fruit character, hot bitterness may range from just enough to the firm presence. 
It should have a malty to somewhat bitter, low to moderate high hop profile. Full bodied and chewy with a velvety luscious texture. Smooth warmth from aged alcohol should be present and should not be hot or harsh. Carbonation should be low to moderate depending on the age and conditioning. It's the richest and the strongest of the English ales, a showcase of multi richness of complex, intense flavors. Now, typically um, for English ones, they're talking about 8 to 12 percent. We're in the higher end, we're at 11.2, and they say IBU should be 35 to 70, and we're much higher at 91. We want to dry that out, we want that dry finish, and um, I think we've really um, achieved what we're looking for. So, I'm going to turn this around here. Bear with me for one second. Flip this camera around and we'll talk to you here and answer some questions you may have. If I can straighten this up. Okay, well, we got uh, Craig watching. Um, who else we got? Gary, Kathy, Doug, Carl, and well, that's about as good as we're going to get here. Tony and Brad. Well, welcome everybody. So this is a beer you're going to really want to get your hands on. This is the most anticipated bottle release we do each year. Ducks ass. This is the 2020. I know everything's backwards here because I got the camera backwards, but uh, we're releasing uh, limited quantities of 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, and 2015. All the details are on our uh, webpage, foggynogginbrewing.com. Hit the beer tab, scroll down to the bottles, and you can look and see how many are available. That's what's available before the orders start coming in for the week and um, the price for each bottle. So you're going to want to order those early because uh, they're very high demand and they're gonna not last a long time. This is an awesome beer and let's see if we can see the clarity a little bit better. So you can see as I get this here you can see right through this beer you can see the, the foggy noggin sign through there and that's pretty amazing for a beer like that to have that kind of clarity. So this is extremely drinkable now but I'm telling you that this is a beer you're gonna want to get several bottles of because these barley wines um, you know they're they're really good today but they're incredible if they're stored and and aged at in cellar temps anything about 50 degrees or colder um, you're gonna get that nice cellaring um, with natural oxidation occurring in these bottles and you're gonna have some of these sugars breaking down what happens is the sugar breaks down it brings complexity to it a little oxidation and so um, you get some of the harshness um, is, is going to mellow out and you're going to get some of those sugars turning in, you know, three to five years. You're going to get those sherry tones, those port-like tones. Um, it, uh, it just makes it all come out and it makes it almost uh, just a, a, a magical drink is what it is. Barley wines are pretty neat. This, I like barley wines a lot and it seems like most people are doing barley wines that are bourbon barrel aged or aged in a spirit barrel. And Unfortunately for me, I want to taste that beer the way it is without going into spirits. If you want to have um, some bourbon with it, you can have a shot of bourbon on the side and you can enjoy that two together. But I think that uh, the beer, if the beer is good, it should be uh, treated and enjoyed as the beer by itself. And I think this is an excellent example of an English barley wine. 100% malts, there's no sugars added, and there's uh, five different dried fruits that are in the boil. So you're getting... Um, really, really uh, interesting beer that's great today, and it's going to be great to, to age. So this 12-ounce bottle of the 2020 variety is $8, and they go up from there. So um, they're $2 additional for each uh, vintage year, and then um, uh, there's only a limited amount, and we, we release these a little bit each year so um, everybody can enjoy them. And so if you, I 
I really suggest in the 2020 at least get two bottles and have one now and maybe age one for a couple of years. If you're adventurous and you want to age this, you might want to get several bottles and then open one each year so you can see how it does. I think the five-year mark on, on beers is, is about the, the height of aging. Uh, that's my experience on, on my beers that I've done and I've been aging. So our anniversary ale, the old ale, as well as this barley wine. I think five years is really the, the sweet spot for, for aging. Uh, welcome, Drew, and Craig's got a question. So if I want it colder, will it ruin it? No, it will not ruin it. Um, what you're going to get is you're going to get a softer um, palate to it. Um, might be to your palate. Um, you're not going to get the depth. You're not going to get the, um, the full flavor profile because that cold temperature is going to really um, uh, mask some of the, the explosion of character that, that warming up to about 50 to 52 degrees is going to bring out in this beer. As I said, I'm drinking this about 50 degrees, and I, I think that this is exploding with character right now. And the color is just absolutely gorgeous, and that clarity on this beer, as I ca just can't um, um, say it anymore, but you can see all the way through and see that sign right through that bottle, uh, the glass, excuse me. 12 ounce bottles, there's very limited, so if you want some, place your orders now for curbside pickup Friday or Saturday between 4 and 5 p.m and uh, let us know which day you're going to, to get when you place your order so we can have it ready for you for curbside pickup. We also have growler fills and we have other bottles and we have Vaga Naga merchandise, hats, shirts, and glassware. So this is a, a, a half pint, it's 10 ounce, and this is perfect for a beer like this because this is really a beer that you could, 12 ounces, you could share with two people because it's 11.2%. And you know, as I said, you want to pour that right down the throat of it. You want to have the foam come up. You want to explode all the flavors coming out. Delicious beer. Before we uh, leave, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the rest of the week. So tomorrow, Thursday, is the happiest half hour of the week. Join us at 5.30 on Facebook Live for some music, some piano, some songs, and just all downright fun. It's the funnest half hour of the week, and it's the official start of the weekend. Next Wednesday, we're going to be doing Cream Ale. will be our featured beer of the week, and we'll be doing a virtual tasting of our Cream Ale. And that's always a fun one to, to taste, and completely different than that. This one, 11.2, huge beer to Cream Ale, which is a very soft, very elegant, very um, sessionable beer. So two different kinds of beers completely. But that's next Wednesday. This weekend, Friday and Saturday, curbside pickup, 4 to 5 p.m. And all the beers are on our website at uh, foggynogginbrewing.com and hit the beer tab. We've got growler fills, and then down below we've also got um, the bottles and then merchandise too. So looking forward to seeing everybody there. So quickly, this is Duck's Ass. This is the 22 version. We also have 19, 18, 17, 16, and 15 available. And... Um, they get more expensive as you get older ages, but it's 11.2% with 91 IBUs. Uh, we brew this in three different batches to get our full one half barrel um, uh, batch. So we have to do six barrels at a time. And uh, it takes us about three months to get this completely done. It's uh, got crisp Maris Otter, 88%, crisp 120 um, crystal malt, crisp 77 crystal malt, 4%, and castle biscuit, 4%. Mashed it at 152 with London water. And then we um, uh, so, uh, we also, at the boil time, as we start to move our, um, our sugar into the boil kettle, we are putting in third of a pound of the following uh, dried fruits. Dried dates, figs, apricots, cranberries, and raisins. Make sure that you cut the figs and dates and apricots in half so you can expose the inside of them and bring out all the, the, the great flavors and the seeds could be exposed. And you're going to boil that for one hour and you're going to add uh, at 60 minutes left in the boil, you're going to add two ounces of magnum, gives you 88 IBUs, and 15 minutes left a half ounce of UK uh, Goldings and you're going to get another three IBUs. And that's going to uh, move over to your fermenter uh, at 65 degrees, let it rise to 68. Uh, we 
um, if you're going to just do one batch of five gallons, uh, let it, uh, make sure you put a plenty of yeast in there, but give it time. You're going to want to give it probably four weeks to ferment completely out. It, um, we add every two weeks more yeast and another batch into it, and then we let it uh, completely ferment out. When you're all done, you want to move it into secondary, uh, 32 degrees. You want to clean this beer out so you can get that clarity that we've got on this. Extremely clear beer, and that's going to be uh, two weeks at uh, 32 degrees. We'll do that, and then we force carbonate it in our kegs at one and a half volumes. These are freshly bottled, and they're delicious. And so I hope that you're going to enjoy it. I look forward to um, seeing everybody pick these up this weekend. Um, or the growler fills or whatever they would like because we've got some great beers for growler fills and we've got other bottles that are amazing and then make sure you get some your fog and Naga merchandise and why not pick up a pair of these uh, um, 10 ounce um, half growlers um, half growlers half pints uh, they're five dollars each they go perfect with a with this, a beer like this and this is a great beer to share with somebody so pick up a few bottles of 2020 and if you're adventurous pick up some bottles of um, prior vintages and you can do your own virtual tasting. So I appreciate everybody joining. Hey, Brian, uh, Ryan just joined. So welcome, Ryan. And uh, if you missed the beginning of it, uh, we'll archive this on our Facebook page. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night for the happiest half hour at 530 on Facebook Live. Cheers, everyone, and thanks for joining.